We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, Chapter 9, entitled Brahma's Prayers for Creative Energy, text number 34. Nana, Nana karma, karma vitanena, vitanena raja, raja bavi, bavi sesrikshata natma vasiddhati asmin te varshiyan madanugraha Nana karma vitanena, Nana karma vitanena, Raja bhavi tishrikshataha, Natma vasidati asiddham te, Natma vasidati Varshiyan mad anugraha, Nana karma vitane na, Raja bhavi se shrikshata, Natma vasidatya simste, Varshiyan mad anugraha, Nana karma vitane na, Raja bhavi se shrikshata, Natma vasidatya simste, Varshiyan mad anugraha.
ladies. Nana Karma. Varieties of service. Varieties of service. Vitanena. Vitanena. By expansion of. Praja. Population. Vahu. Ah? Babi. Innumerable, Sikshrikshataha, desiring to increase, Na, never, Atma, Self, Avasiddha, will be bereaved, Asmin, in the matter, Te, of you, of you. Varshiyan, always, always increasing. increasing. My, me, anugraha. anugraha, causeless mercy. Causeless mercy. Translation. Since you have desired to increase the population innumerably and expand your varieties of service, you shall never be deprived in this matter because my causeless mercy upon you will always increase for all time. You can repeat. Since you have desired to increase the population innumerably and expand your varieties of service, you shall never be deprived in this matter because my causeless mercy upon you will always increase for all time. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. A pure devotee of the Lord, being con cognizant of the facts of the particular time, object, and circumstances, always desires to, always desires to, what is it? Expand the number of devotees of the Lord in variety, in various ways. Such expansions of transcendental service may appear to be material to the materialist, but factually, <laughs> Prabhu, please, <laughs> may appear to be material to the materialist, but, Prabhu, who's operating this? But factually, they are expansions of the causeless mercy of the Lord towards the devotee. Plans for such activities may appear to be material activities, but they are different in potency, being engaged in the satisfaction of the transcendental senses of the Supreme. Omagyana Timuram Dasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksuran Militani Natas Mai Shri Guru Venama Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale 
Swayam Rupa Kadama Yam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Yatapada Kamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahagana Raganatam Vitam Tam Sadevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakanitam Scha He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sude Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Payevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Nama Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Shundyavadi Paschachyate Shatarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasati Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama So the, the personality of Godhead is praising Lord Brahma, as you can see in this verse. Lord Brahma was given the instruction that he should populate the universe, he should arrange for the universe to be inhabited. So the Lord is appreciating his service attitude that he desired to increase the population innumerably and also expand his varieties of service. So that mood of service to the Lord is so much appreciated that the Lord promises him that you will never de be deprived of the Lord's mercy at any time will always increase for all time. The mercy upon Brahma is going to increase for all time. So that's a very nice uh, blessing to receive from the personality of Godhead. Prabhupada explains in the purport how sometimes materialistic people consider services which we are doing, activities which we are performing to be material. But we should understand that the activities which a devotee performs for the pleasure of Lord Krishna is not at all material, but it is transcendental. It is spiritual activity. What is matter is made spiritual by the attitude of the devotee. The devotee's attitude is to perform the service for the pleasure of the personality of Godhead. And with that mood of offering service to the Lord, the material energy is transformed into spiritual energy. For the devotee of the Lord, he can see this, the Lord everywhere, in everything. Yomam pasyati sarvatra sarvam chamai pasyati tasyaham na pranasyami sachamena pranasyati 
For one who sees me everywhere and sees everything in me, I am never lost to him, nor is he ever lost to me. So devotee wants to develop that kind of vision, to see the Lord in everything, and to see everything, all the activities which we're doing, to see them also as the activities for the pleasure of Lord Krishna. In other words, we want to see everything as spiritual. We want to be engaged in activities, not material activities, but spiritual activities. The Mayavadis or the impersonalists and the Jnanis, they will renounce everything. They go away from the world. They want to give up everything. They say, oh, material. They do not understand how matter can be made into spirit. One time I was distributing Prabhupada's books. And we had a book table. And it was in a Buddhist country like Taiwan. And one on the book table we had a book by Kurma Prabhu, Cooking with Kurma. And you know, his books are full of pictures of very delicious uh, dishes. Everything is made to look so attractive. And so one of the Buddhist monks came by and they picked up the book and they looked at it and they said, this is material. And they said, this is all, they thought that cooking to make such nice, opulent, colorful, tasty, aromatic dishes, they thought this is sense gratification. And that is not encouraged in the Buddhist path. The Buddhists want to go away. They want to deny the pleasures of the senses. The food should be tasteless. No taste, right? Even soap, no smell. If it has a perfume, oh no, that's not good. Everything has to be very basic. There should not be any agitation to the senses. Even kirtan, they were appreciating the kirtan, but they would not take part, they would not get up and dance. They, they cannot do that. They, they would uh, sit and absorb themselves as we chanted. They, they liked the mantra. The sound of the mantra was very nice. It was very pleasing for them to go into meditation. But they cannot exhibit any kind of emotion because they think that is material. So they do not understand the difference in consciousness between the devotee and the materialist. Just like when we're cooking, we're not cooking for our own pleasure. Rather, we cook for the pleasure of Krishna. Whatever we're cooking in the kitchen, it's an offering for Lord Krishna's enjoyment. It's not for our own enjoyment. <coughs> we want to cook with that consciousness. We're cooking to please Krishna. And similarly, uh, when we are chanting and dancing, it is for the pleasure of Lord Krishna. We dance for the pleasure of Krishna. Not for our own pleasure, and not to show people what a great dancer I am, but we want to show, we want to please Krishna. Sometimes, you know, we forget these things, and we have to be reminded that everything is done as an offering to Lord Krishna. So, of course, we could say, well, that's karma yoga. Karma yoga. Yad karoshi yaj ashnasi yaj jahosi dadasi yad yad tapashyas tukuntiya 
Takurushva Mad Arpanam. So Karma Arpanam, offering the results of your work to Krishna, is Karma Yoga. Lord Chaitanya didn't accept that. When Lord Chaitanya was, when he asked Ramananda Rai to quote a verse from scriptures about the goal of life, Ramananda Rai quoted that verse from Bhagavad Gita, Karmarpanam, offering the results of your work to Krishna. But Ram, Lord Chaitanya said, mm, not very, not very devotional. People may offer the results of their work. They give the results of their work. But that is not what bhakti yoga is about. That is not the highest, the perfection. And so, of course, Ramananda Rai then went on and he spoke about, he offered the Swadharma Tiag, giving up the results of our work. And Lord Chaitanya said, no, that's also not what we want. So Dharma Tyag. Many people come to Krishna consciousness and their motive is not for Krishna. <laughs> they have some other motive. One man came, he wanted to become a devotee, he wanted to get away from his family. He had children. He said, oh, it's terrible at home. <laughs> he wanted to take sannyas. Mm. And so that kind of renunciation, that is not encouraged. And that is not Lord Chaitanya's mood. What is Lord Chaitanya's mood, rather, is stay in whatever position you're in. Stay in whatever position you're in in the association of devotees and hear about Lord Krishna. And in that way, you can conquer Krishna. Although Lord Krishna is a jita, although he is unconquerable, he becomes conquered by the pure love of his devotees. So the devotees know how to change matter into spirit simply by connecting everything to Krishna. Just like in the Bhagavad Gita, that Lord Krishna, he spoke just after speaking the verse about Karmarpanam, he offered the verse, Patram Pushvam Palam Toyam, that you can offer a leaf, a flower, a fruit, water, very easy things to obtain even in any corner of the world, you can get these kind of things and they can be offered to Lord Krishna. But it's not the offering which Krishna wants. It's not that Krishna is eager to get our fruit or our flowers. Rather, what Lord Krishna wants and what he stresses in that verse by repeating the term is that he wants devotion, bhakti. Patram pushvam palam tayam yo me bhaktya prayasya tadaham bhakti uparitam ashnami prayatam. So it is devotion, the bhakti which Krishna wants. Of course, we shouldn't think, oh, he just wants bhakti, okay, I'll just give him some leaves and I'll keep everything else for myself. No, we should want to give the best to Krishna. We want to offer the best to Krishna. We want to please Krishna. We want to sacrifice for Krishna's pleasure. Just as Lord Brahma made great sacrifices to please Lord Krishna, he underwent great tapasya at the beginning of the creation. He simply heard the two syllables, ta and pa, and he took the sound to be divine. And he then practiced great austerities for a very long time, like a thousand years of the, a hundred years of the demigods. Very long time, did tapasya, in 
he was successful. Success was that he was empowered to take up the work of creation on behalf of the Lord. The initial creation is done by Lord Vishnu, the different elements of the creation, the different uh, atom elements, the material nature, Bhumer, Apo, Nalo, Vayu, Kammano, Buddha, Evacha. These are, this is the creation of the Supreme Lord. Lord Brahma is like the engineer, right? Many of you are probably engineers, right? Engin what do engineers do? They get the parts and put them together. Right? You buy the parts, the spare parts. You have, we have this, even you can make computers, you can, you get the parts. You get the hard disk, you get the screen. You can put everything together, make your own computer. We used to make our own rec record players in the 1960s. We would play music and we would get our own sound system, make our own little, um, tape um, machines, you know, for broadcasting to make the music. So put the pieces together. That's the engineer's job. Brahma is like that. He's getting the pieces. So secondary creation is done by Lord Brahma. Of course, not to minimize his service. It's a great service. And the Lord is appreciating his service. That is why he's giving this anugraha, that very special mercy is being given, being bestowed on Brahma. Because he has the, the right mood, he has the service attitude. He's, he wants to do service. He has to do creation, shristi tattva, the, the creation, but the secondary creation. He has to create the bodies. Of course, his creation, his creative work was not appreciated by the gopis. They called him Jada, the stupid Brahma, useless guy. Why? because he makes the eyes which blink and it obstructs our vision of Lord Krishna. We want to see Lord Krishna constantly, but Brahma has given us these eyes which are always blinking. So he's a useless creator. Hmm. So that was the mood of the gopis anyway, due to their praying, because they had so much praying. Lord Krishna. So here we can see the Lord appreciating the mood of Lord Brahma, that he wants to take up this task which has been given to him by the Lord. And we should understand that service is not mundane, it's not material, it's spiritual because it's being done on behalf of the Lord. Creation, just like, you know, if you were building a temple and constructing a temple, it's not material, it's spiritual, a spiritual activity. We may be taking the material elements, but because we're using them, putting them together for the service of Krishna, therefore, Everything is becoming spiritualized by the potency of Krishna. The example is given, just like you have a metal bar. You put the metal bar into the hot fire. The metal bar becomes hot like the fire. It takes on the qualities of the fire. In the same way, when we utilize the material energy for the service of Krishna, it becomes spiritual. This building here, our place in Kaff Road, 
next to bars and discos and so many horrible places, you know? But it is the transcendental place. It is the spiritual world. Or at least it is the embassy of the spiritual world. Because there, there is nothing mundane or material going on here. Everything is dedicated for the service of the Lord. This means it is spiritualized. People often have the wrong understanding that, oh, material things are not good. And, you know, so many people, they, they praise that Bengali man who had money on the table and he was, his picture was taken like this, that he would not touch the money. And Prabhupada said, yeah, he said, he didn't touch the money on the table, but below the table he had a lot of money. <laughs> and he, he said, Prabhupada said, they should take a picture of me counting the money. <laughs> and he said, I will spend it all for Krishna to build nice temples and to print books and to do preaching programs for the service of Krishna. So devotees are not afraid of the material energy because we know how to spiritualize everything. Bhogaishwarya prasaktanam taya parita chetasam Vaya Vasayatmika Buddhi Samado Nanabhidiyate. In the minds of those who are attached to material opulence and sense gratification and who are bewildered by such things, the resolute determination for devotional service will not take place. So we have to be careful about these things. Boga and Aishwarya, material opulence and sense gratification, the Boga, right? These things can be an obstacle to devotional service. If we think they are for our enjoyment, then it's a problem. And we have to understand these, the, everything, the opulence, the the boga, and it's all for using for the service of Krishna. Everything is to be offered to Krishna. Nothing for ourselves. We want to simply serve Krishna. When Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada was, donate, was given a big building in Bara Bazar in Calcutta, Initially, it was encouraged. One man, the, the building was donated by one man. One man, he arranged the construction of the Bara Bazaar temple. It's a very nice building, beautiful, well made, and uh, marble, and very beautiful. But when they were getting the building, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada heard his brahmacharis and different leaders talking that this will be my office, I will stay here, and like, like that. This will be my room. Bhakti, when Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati heard this, then he was very disappointed. He said, there will be fire in this place because they were simply thinking of the building for their own sense gratification. So Srila Prabhupada trained us to understand that the buildings are temples. They are bases for our armies to go out and fight Maya. They're not simply a place to eat and sleep but they're a place where we're meant to go out and fight maya. Our business as devotees is to fight the material energy. We don't want to just simply make our temples into guest houses for eating and sleeping. 
But if we are serious in the practice of Krishna consciousness, then there's no harm for people to use them nicely. Everything can be spiritualized, but with caution, you have to be careful. You know, somebody may say, oh, I'm buying a new car, and they get a nice big car, and they say, yeah, when my guru comes, I'll take my guru in the car. Yeah. So yeah, they get the new car, they say, this is, when my guru comes, I will drive the guru in the car. But actually, Guru comes maybe one day in three <laughs> years or something, you know, and they're driving the big car, you know. So there are some, you get some problems sometimes. Having nice buildings also, it's very good. We like to have nice buildings to attract people. We should have nice places because the public is, we want people to come, you should have proper facilities to introduce people to Krishna consciousness. But we have to, have to be cautious about these things. When Prabhupada came to Hong Kong, the devotees received Prabhupada in Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, there was this one Indian family, they were owning the Holiday Inn. So they, the, and the, the devotees there, this one actually, Barijan Prabhu and his very good wife, Jagatharini, they were there, the two devotees, they were in Hong Kong, and they had cultivated these Indian people, uh, rich business people from Sindhi community, wealthy, and this one man had, he had the, Holiday Inn, he owned the Holiday Inn, and when he heard that the Guru was coming, he said, we will give him the suite in the Holiday Inn. And he said, you can also use my car to go and bring him from the airport. It was a Rolls Royce, you know, the very first class car. And so, Prabhupada came to Hong Kong and and they invited the reporters to come and meet Prabhupada. And of course, the reporters picked up on this. They were surprised that, uh, you know, Swamiji, you're the renounced person. You're coming in the renounced clothes. You can, we can see you're renounced. But you came in this big car. And you're living in this suite, in this hotel, very uh, good, cla high class hotel. Is this appropriate? And Prabhupada said, well, if I was sitting under a tree, you would not come to see me. <laughs> so Prabhupada was utilizing these things in the service of Krishna. And Prabhupada also explained how the spiritual master is the representative of the Supreme Lord. So whatever is offered to him, it is offered on that he accepts it on behalf of the Supreme Lord. He doesn't accept it for his own sense gratification, but it's all for the service of Lord Krishna. We have to utilize everything in the service of Krishna. We don't want to renounce everything but rather we want to purify everything, spiritualize it by connecting it to Krishna. So because Prabhupada went and stayed in that man's hotel and because Prabhupada rode in that man's car, the man got great benefit. The man was benefited because he was serving a great devotee. And by doing service for great devotees, Mahatsevam dwara mahor vimuktis. It opens the doors to liberation. So the business of devotees is to engage people. And often we have to engage people by accepting service from them. But we should always understand whatever service we accept from them 
we accept it on behalf of Lord Krishna. It is to be utilized in the service of Krishna. Just like uh, people giving donations, it is not for our own sense gratification, but it's for the service of Lord Krishna. Just like maintaining temples like this temple, it costs a lot to maintain, to rent. This is not our own building. We are renting it. It takes a lot of funds every month to maintain. There are many expenses to be met. And it's difficult for the people who are overseeing and who are managing these things. Sometimes it will be difficult to maintain. So as a sannyasi traveling and preaching, we, also, we often see these difficulties. We are confronted with the problems, how to maintain the Krishna consciousness movement. And Srila Prabhupada was also concerned for these things. He knew it's not very easy. Um, then you have different opposition. You have sometimes neighbors are not favorable. Sometimes the, in, the, in the, the, this area they may say, oh no, you cannot have this program here. They may object. You get complaints from neighbors, that's a big problem. And then you have also even atheistic governments, they're also a problem. So that there are many obstacles in presenting Krishna consciousness. Not everyone is favorable. But despite all the obstacles, we have to go forward. Lord Chaitanya also faced obstacles. In the time of the Chankazi, the Chankazi was opposing the Sankirtan movement. But Lord Chaitanya was very bold. Of course, we cannot imitate the Chankazi. But we have to understand that there are obstacles, there are difficulties. And Srila Prabhupada writes in the Chaitanya Charitamrita that in every genuine spiritual process, there will be challenges, there will be obstacles. He said that is the sign of the authorized nature of our Krishna consciousness movement, that the demonic people oppose it. <laughs> the, the, there are two classes of people, there's the devotee and there are the demons. And not everyone is devotee. So those who are not favorable to Krishna consciousness, they will oppose, they make difficulties. And it takes time to establish the genuine process. Srila Prabhupada told us, he said, in the beginning they will laugh at you. People would laugh at us when we would do Harinam, we would go out in the streets and chant with our shaved heads and robes and they would laugh. They say, oh, look at these funny people, shaved heads and chikas, you know. And there we were with our bed sheets and so on. So they were laughing at us. But then after a while, then they started to hate us. <laughs> In the beginning they were laughing, but then they, when, when they saw that we didn't stop, when they saw that we continued, and even that we grew bigger, then they began to hate us. And they were, they were hating us that we were always making so much propaganda and disturbing their quiet. And so that was a, the, the phase two. But then Prabhupada said after that, he said, then they won't join us. Finally, he said, in the end, they won't join us. And so that comes. 
How long it will take, we don't know. You have to be patient and see. But we have to understand these difficulties are there. We have to be convinced of the authority behind the Krishna consciousness movement. And we have to appreciate that everything is actually spiritual, that it is not material, whatever we're doing. Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada told His Holiness Bhakti Swarup Damodar Maharaj. So Bhakti Swarup Damodar Maharaj was to preach to the scientists that life comes from life and not from chemicals. And Bhakti Swarup Damodar Maharaj was saying to Prabhupada, he said, Prabhupada, I, I, I just want to study more about Rasa Leela and to enjoy Gita Govinda and, and these things. I'm more interested in the Manipuri songs. In Manipur, they sing beautiful uh, bhajans of Lord Krishna. And, but Prabhupada said, and, and, he, and he said to Prabhupada, he said, Prabhupada, I want to understand what is my rasa with Krishna also. And I think I have to go more into the you know, the, the bhajan and kirtan. But Prabhupada said to him, you preach to the scientists that life comes from life and Krishna will reveal your rasa to you. You don't have to worry about that. Krishna will reveal it to you when you preach to these scientists, just by preaching to the scientists. So he was convincing Swarup Damodar Maharaj said, preaching to these scientists about the origin of life was not in, wasn't anything mundane or materialistic, but it was the highest spiritual service for Lord Krishna. And similarly, Tamal Krishna Goswami and Giri Raj Maharaj, they were involved in constructing the temple at Juhu in Mumbai. Now it's Mumbai, but in those days it was Bombay. So they were, cons they were getting permission to put up the temple there, and they had to go regularly into the town, into the city, to the government offices to try to get permission for putting up the temple and the guest house and everything there. And Tamal Krishna Maharaj was saying to Prabhupada, he said, Prabhupada, he said, you know, every day I have to go there, I have to go to the government and I have to, I have to read through all of their laws, the city laws and the planning laws. He said, I know, that, I know the city laws better than I know your books. <laughs> and Prabhupada said, this is your service for Krishna. He said, this is not material. He said, you're building a temple for Krishna. And he told him, try to understand that this is a spiritual activity. You may think it's something mundane, but you're doing the highest service for Krishna. Because by building this temple, so many people are getting benefit. And you can see today, you go to the temple and every day there's crowds of people. There's so many people. So many people coming to the temple, and so many people have been there. The temple is very well known. So, initially we don't always appreciate the spiritual nature of what we're doing. Just like when we go to chant and dance and perform Sankirtan, we may think this is just something mundane, or just singing and dancing, but actually it's the highest spiritual activity. The Sankirtan, Chaitanya Lila parallels with Krishna Lila. In Krishna Lila, it was Rasa Lila. And then Krishna comes in the Kali Yuga as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and they're doing Sankirtan. The Sankirtan activity parallels Rasa Lila. 
we don't think of Sankirtan as being always the highest spiritual activity. Sometimes when we try to get the youngsters to go on Sankirtan, they say, oh no, I'm not going to do that, oh, that's weird, you know. You know, they, they don't have the, the very good impression. They think Sankirtan, oh, it's something weird. People look at you and laugh at you and, no, I don't want to do that. They don't understand, they cannot appreciate the spiritual nature of the Sankirtan movement. But it is described in Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, it is described that in the Kali Yuga, those people who are intelligent, they will take part in the Sankirtan movement. Krishna Varnam Tavish Akrishnam Sango Pangastra Parshadam Yagnaye Sankirtan Praye Yajantihi Sumedasaha. So the word is there, Sumedasaha. Medasa meaning intelligent, and su medasa means very auspicious intelligence, very good brain. Those people who have a good brain, they will join the Sankirtan movement, the Sankirtan party, chanting the holy name. On the other hand, people who are worshipping for some material benefit, they're described as Alpa Medasa. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna speaks about Alpa Medasa. Antabattu phalam tesham tadbhavati alpa medasham. You worship other gods for material benefit. Then that small brain, Alpa, very meager, very small intelligence. They are worshipping to get the fruit which is limited and temporary. So, do you want to be Alpa Medesaha or Sum Medesaha? We hope you will want the Sum Medesaha, the good intelligence. And that is why we take part in the congregational chanting of the holy names. So, everything material can be purified, just like our bodies are full of so many diseases, but they can be purified by using the body in the service of Krishna. People use their limited brains to understand what is matter and what is spirit. Just like somebody saw Prabhupada putting on eyeglasses and they said to me, they said, oh, I thought he was a spiritual person. Why is he using eyeglasses? They could not understand what is matter and what is spirit? And, and then they said, if he is spiritual, why does he have to wear a big coat and a big sweater? Why is he, does he feel, he shouldn't feel the cold. If he has a spiritual body, he shouldn't feel the cold. So he shouldn't wear a sweater, he shouldn't have a big coat. These people give these kind of stupid things, you see. They try to argue try to prove that the person who is actually the advanced spiritual personality is not, that he is just an ordinary person. They cannot see what it means to be spiritual. They don't understand what does it mean to be a spiritual person. It means to use everything in the service of Krishna. So using the eyeglasses is to, for the service of Krishna, to be able to write books and to wear a sweater and wear a big coat. That's to protect the body, to keep it healthy in the service of Krishna. 
because the body is given by the grace of Krishna. So, we have to eat, you have to sleep. We don't eat too much or too little, we don't sleep too much or sleep too little. Sleep enough to keep the body healthy in the service of Krishna. That is spiritual, using everything for Krishna. Yukta Vairagya, everything in relation to Krishna. And Fogu Vairagya, giving up things which can be used in Krishna's service. So we want to understand Lord Brahma's position, how Lord Brahma is doing his service. We may think, oh, producing a lot of population, that's material. But no, that can, it's a spiritual. To Bhakti Vinod Thakur produced what was it, 11, 12 children. He was training them all to be devotees of Lord Krishna. And of course, one of them was Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. So Bhakti Vinod Thakur was utilizing his householder ashram to produce progeny who could grow, grow up and be active in the service of Lord Krishna. It is not material. It is not mundane to, to, for people to uh, produce children. It's a great service for the Krishna consciousness movement. The children of our devotees are the future of our Krishna consciousness movement. Those who can, they're born in devotee families, they have a great opportunity for Krishna consciousness. And so we don't see these children as being ordinary, rather they're spiritual. So we want to develop that spiritual vision to see everything in relation to Krishna and how it can be used for Krishna. How it can be used for Krishna. Just like I want to Prabhupada, Prabhupada had one servant, his name was Upendra. And Upendra described when he got initiation, he wanted to give Prabhupada a present. So he gave him something which he thought was useful. He gave it to Prabhupada. It was like a, a blanket. And, and he gave it to Prabhupada. Prabhupada said, what is this? He said, it's a blanket, Prabhupada. He said, no, it's useless. <laughs> Prabhupada didn't think very useful. And so he put it down. But when he came back later in Prabhupada's room, he saw Prabhupada put the blanket on the floor. Jai, Jagannath Balaji. He put the blanket on the floor so people could sit on it. So Upendra was appreciating how Prabhupada was using the blanket in the service of Krishna. Put it on the floor, people can sit on the blanket. So he thought, very nice, he used it for Krishna's service. So like that, Prabhupada was thinking, someone gave Prabhupada a gold ring. And Prabhupada, he took it, put it on his finger, he wore it for a little while. You know, because someone gave it to Prabhupada, so he used it for the service of Krishna. And so someone gave it to him, and he wore it for some time. Then after some time, Prabhupada's servant was getting married, and Prabhupada took the ring off, gave it to him. He gave it to his servant. And he gave one ring also to Barijan Prabhu's wife, Jagatarini. He, one time, like that. Probably, you know, sometimes we, oh, Swamiji's wearing rings. He thought, oh, material, you know, material. I thought he's a Swamiji. Why is he wearing rings? And somebody gave them to him, you know. So he, they gave it to him. So he thought, engaged them in the service, put it on his finger, wore it for some time, and then gave it to someone else. Just like Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Someone gave Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu a Govardhan Shila, a stone from Govardhan Hill, 
and a garland of conch shells. And so Lord Chaitanya, he, was, he kept that Govardhan Shila for some time and he would put it on his head, he would hold it on his eyes and like this. And then after some time, then he gave these things to Raghunath Das Goswami. And he told Raghunath, you worship them. And Raghunath did, Raghunath worshipped them. So like that, devotees, uh, we try to use everything in the service of Krishna. Whatever people give us, we try to utilize that in the service of Krishna. That is Krishna consciousness. Are there any questions? Yes, bodily pains are coming on us. We could say, sometimes Krishna gives us these bodily pains. It may be reactions due to our past activities. You know, we're not like Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada suffering bodily inconvenience, it would be due to his disciples. But when we suffer bodily pains, it's due to our own past the reactions from our own past. So how should we view these difficulties? We should think that actually I'm such a rascal, I should suffer much more, but Krishna has reduced the suffering to a, only a token. He's minimized the suffering. And whatever difficulties and inconveniences the bodily disease gives us, we accept that and go on with service to Krishna. We don't want it to stop our service to Krishna. We, even though there may be some bodily discomfort and so on, we have to continue. We should think this is a test from Krishna. Krishna is putting me into difficulties. It's like a test for me to make me more conscious of Krishna, to increase my consciousness of Krishna. Tate nukampam tushamikshamana. So like that, Krishna says, and Srimad Bhagavatam says, one who tolerates all adverse conditions, but goes on with his devotional service, hearing and chanting then he is qualified to become my unalloyed devotee. So we're tested. There will be tests. Definitely. You have to expect. Prabhupada, even Prabhupada was gored by a boar, a bull, just after he took sannyas in Vrindavan. Some bull gored him and he, he was badly injured took him some time to recover. So you, we have to be prepared that these difficulties will come on us and we have to take shelter of Krishna. That we have to see these things as a, a, a test from Krishna. That's what we pray to Krishna, to help us to overcome these difficulties. The obstacles are going to be there, but we take shelter of Lord Krishna, or Krishna can remove all the obstacles. We've seen many different devotees go on with their service despite so many difficulties with their health. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, 
we read about the leopard Vasudev, the le he had leprosy, and the worms were eating his body. So Lord Chaitanya happened to meet him and embraced him, and from the embrace of Lord Chaitanya, his body was rejuvenated and restored to good health. But when his body was restored, then Vasudev said to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he said, he said, now I may, I may be inclined towards sense gratification. I may fall down from my position. So Lord Chaitanya told him, so you have to constantly chant Hare Krishna and preach as well. Preach Krishna consciousness and that will keep you in Krishna consciousness. So when we're in difficulties, we have to also preach, and we still have to chant. Prabhupada was in difficulty, he was, he was he, did, he preached to his last breath. He didn't stop preaching. And he always wanted the holy name constantly. That was always there, the holy name. He wanted to, to, have, to hear kirtan. When Lokana Swami came or Hamsaduda came and Bari, and Bari and Brad Bharadraj, they were all great kirtaniyas. Prabhupada had them come do kirtan for him. Prabhupada wanted constantly devotees there chanting. They didn't just put a tape recorder. They wanted the devotees, the disciples, to come chant for him. The living presence is much better than just some recording. Any other question? Hare Krishna. Yeah. Uh, Maharaj, you said that uh, we are suffering because of our own karma. Uh, suppose we are only initiated and uh, if the Guru takes the karma, then why does the suffering come? <laughs> well, that's the surrendering process. People come, take initiation, how much do they follow? Are they following? Are they faithful to the teachings of the Guru? How much have they actually taken shelter. It's not just only the process of initiation. Well, initiation is, we could say, it's a process. It's not just the ritual. It's not just you sit there in the yagya and he gives you the beads and he tells you your name and you're initiated. But it's a process by which you become connected to the service of the spiritual teacher by taking inst instruction and by serving, and in this way, then you become properly connected to the spiritual teacher. But we hear that the sinful reactions, that they go down, but they don't completely stop. Just like the fan, Prabhupada would give the example of the electric fan, that it still has some momentum. It doesn't immediately stop. And so in the same way, although we take initiation, there is still some residual of karma there. It's going, there's still going to be some traces of karma there. It's not going to be all removed. But 
gradually as you go on in the practice of devotional service, then it, it can all be removed. But it takes time. It's not just the ritual. It's not just simply, oh, I got initiation, all my karma's all gone. Mm -hmm. not, not quite like that. Some people even think, you know, I've already, I'm already liberated, I'm initiated. No, you have to do the you have to do the, go through the process. And that requires anartha nivriti, right? Bhajana kriya anartha nivriti. How much have we got rid of the anarthas from the heart? So that is important for us. We want to get rid of the karma. <laughs> we don't just want to get rid of the karma Rather, a devotee should be willing to tolerate all kinds of difficulties and go on and serve Krishna. So it's not that we just took initiation to give our karma away or to get relief from karma. That is not devotional service. That is the mode of goodness, you may say. You want to get rid of your sinful reactions. So the guru will come and take away all my sinful reactions. But then, did, did you stop sinning? Have you given up all sins? Or are you still, you know, <laughs> still engaged in ordinary mundane activities? Then there will be karma. How much have we dedicated ourselves to Krishna? So initiation, means now I'm finished with material life. Have we, have we finished with material life? Hmm. Probably we still got so many things and commitments and so on in the material world. We, we try to get away from the material life, but it takes some time to, to stop everything and to separate ourselves from the material world certainly takes some time. So, getting rid of the karma, it's not immediate, but gradually. As you go on in Krishna consciousness, then that karma will be taken away. It would be nice to think, oh, no karma, everything, <laughs> all finished, and no, suf no suffering, no, no disease, you know. <laughs> but there will be, there will be things like that, there will be disease. Our bodies are not spiritual yet. But they can, they can become spiritual the more we dedicate them in the service of Krishna. Then the body will become spiritualized. We see the Pandavas going back to Godhead in the same body. They don't give up the body, they go back to Godhead in the same body. So it happens, you know, Tukaram, Dhruva Maharaj, you know, they went back to Godhead, their body. They didn't give up the body. Their bodies were fully spiritual. Some, some who was it? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu entered the Gopinath deity. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, of course, he's, he's the Supreme Lord himself. So his body is fully spiritual. Rasikananda, he was a great devotee. His body was also. Oh, Naratam Das Thakur, his body became milk. He took Dud Samadhi. 
He was bathing in the Padma River and his body turned into milk. So the, the disciples were with him at the time. They collected the milk and they put that milk into Samadhi. So very great souls. They don't have a material body. But there were other great souls, they suffered. Madhavendra Puri, Madhavendra Puri was a very great personality. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took initiation in the line of Madhva because of Madhavendra Puri. Because Madhavendra Puri had brought that seed of love for Krishna on the level of Baba, on uh, the ecstatic love for Krishna. But Madhavendra Puri suffered when he was in old age, he was, his body was sick and diseased and uh, his servant Ishwara Puri was taking care of him and reminding him about Krishna. Of course you could say maybe, maybe Madhavendra Puri's suffering was due to his disciples because he had some fallen disciples also. Like Ramachandra Puri was his disciple. Ramachandra Puri had become a Mayavadi. So even Madhavendra Puri, you know, he had, he, had a, he had a lot of disciples. Advaita Acharya was disciple, Madhavendra Puri. Pundarik Vijayaniri also, Madhavendra Puri. So, You take disciples, you get you get these things. Some people, the the brahmanas from Tirupati, the those Sri Vaishnava brahmanas, they came to see Prabhupada, and they were telling Prabhupada that you know he said so long as you're present on the planet, you shouldn't put your murti. On the, on the, in the temple. They said, you should wait until after you leave the body, then we can put your murti on the, in, the, in the temple. And they said, the reason why, they said, because people will come, they'll touch the murti, they'll touch the feet. They said, you will get the karma. They said, you're going to have to suffer. You'll get a lot of bad karma. And it will accelerate you giving up your body. You have to take all their sinful reactions. But Prabhupada said to them, he said, that's why I came. He said, I came to give them that opportunity to help them, to get them. So yeah, we do suffer. We do get these diseases and so on. It's an opportunity for all of us to go deeper into Krishna consciousness. Just like as you get older, you become more renounced, right? Right? It's supposed to be. <laughs> as you get older, you can't eat so much. Right? You don't have the same power, digestion, these things. The senses become weaker. So as you get older, you can become more renounced and more detached from the material body. So it's, it's a preparation for leaving the world. You're getting old, as we get old, we become more prepared to leave the body. That any time you have to leave, give up the body. So you don't want to be somebody like Dhritarashtra. No. 
sitting at home and he, he hadn't prepared, he hadn't done anything and he was eating the food of Bhima. Bhima had killed all of his sons. Bhima had killed his sons and still Dhritarashtra is living there and eating the remnants of his food. So he was fortunate. Of course, Dhritarashtra got Vidura associate and Vidura convinced him to get out. You have to prepare to leave the body. So all of us, we also have to prepare. At some gradually, you have to prepare. Recognize old age is coming and make arrangements to detach ourselves from the material body. Prabhupada gave everything away. He gave everything he had. Give the give somebody the watch. Every he was giving away everything just because he knew he was going to leave the body. We come with nothing, we should leave with nothing. And you will, you will leave with nothing. <laughs> Time will take everything away. But we have to recognize that. The materialistic people, they're trying to hold on. They're fighting, trying to stay. They want to stay. They want to stay. They don't want to leave. So we have to, devotees, we understand that death is simply the change of body. It's an opportunity to go closer to Krishna. On our journey back home, back to Godhead, we hope that we can go f closer to move on towards Krishna. So we give up the body. We don't want to take the, another body in the material world. We want to go to the spiritual world. If you get another body that's that means you failed, right? We failed. Just like if, you fit, if you're trying to learn to drive the car and you have the driving test and you fail, you have to do the whole thing again. You have to do. Or if you're studying in the college and you fail, then you have to do the whole course again. Even if you get sick, you're not able to do the exam, then you have to go the, the whole year and do the whole thing again. So it's such a waste of time. The so same way if we have to take another birth in this material world, it's not good. It's a, a waste of our time. We want to take advantage. Now, this is the time. Be here now. Use the time for Krishna's service. Make the best of this life that we won't come back. Prabhupada would say, don't give me trouble. Don't bring me back to try to, because the spiritual master is supposed to save the disciple. So he said, if you come back, then the spiritual master, he has to come and look for you. Where is that person? I have to bring him out from the world again. So we don't want to be troublesome. We want to make the best of this opportunity to go back to God. Okay, Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai, go back to Vrinda, Ki Jai.